Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong. Welcome to the back office. Today I made myself a self-contained stealth arcade uh, gaming rig that's built into a monitor. And not only is it built into a monitor, it's actually in the monitor itself, in the plastic case under the metalwork. I had to do a little bit of construction and metalwork altering, but uh, oh, and also a bit of soldering. And uh, I've managed to make sure that the whole thing looks stock. All the USB ports and things on the monitor actually work and hook up. So you plug your joysticks, keyboards and things in. It's like a whole self-contained machine. I've based it on an old Raspberry Pi Model B board I have. It's not the best board you can use for this. There are new versions of the Raspberry Pi, which would be awesome. But actually, it's pretty amazing. And, you know, I've got... Uh, I've tried it out. You can run Super Nintendo, Mega Drive, Neo Geo, CPS, any MAME arcade, anything on this thing. So it's just fantastic. And I've got, uh, ooh, somewhere, I'll show it to you later, a Super Nintendo USB control pad. And that's the perfect controller. And it's nice. There's no wires, there's no mess, there's nothing. What I've also done is built into it a wireless connection as well. And I've made sure that the power to the Raspberry Pi board is actually available all the time, even if the monitor's off. It's taking it from the standby current. So that means that I can actually use this as a media center as well. So even when it's turned off, I can still access the data on it or use it to download things in the background because it's quite a low power machine. Um, so it's actually quite fantastic. So I'm going to do a little bit of an overview of that and uh, just show you a few of the key features inside it. So this is the back of the monitor with the cover off. You can see at the bottom it has a DVI and VGA connector and here was a USB-A connector and that was the one that actually hooked up to the inbuilt USB hubs. So I've removed the connector because I've actually wired that internally and I'll show you that now in a moment. But we've actually got a DVI wire here that just loops through. I did contemplate moving the PCB inside and wiring this manually, but actually I thought this is a bit more configurable. I mean, this is nice because this keeps not only the DVI there, which you could use in the future if you had to, but actually you've got the VGA input as a second input, so you can still use this as a stock monitor anyway. Up at the top, because I did not have, unfortunately, a shorter HDMI to DVI wire, I had a bit of excess wire, so what I've done here is just cable tied it to the chassis. Plenty of room in there, so it's out of the way. Here you've actually got the memory card for the Raspberry Pi. A little bit of rough metal work. I have lost my Dremel. There's another bit, a hole here, as you can see in here. That's the audio to the Raspberry Pi because, of course, this is a DVI connection and not an HDMI connection, so there's no audio available for the monitor. The monitor does come with a clip-on uh, soundbar, so what I do is, as I'm putting it all back together, I'm making sure that audio wire is routed and just plugged into the top here. So I'm just going to undo the four screws and flip this over so you can have a look inside. So as you can see, this is the inside of the case. This is the power supply of the monitor and this is the controller board. I've added a small case mod here to allow the HDMI wire that goes to the Raspberry Pi through the old USB-A port. And then what I've done is removed the USB-A port and I've actually soldered on a new cable here with a standard USB connector that goes into the end of the Raspberry Pi. You can see the Raspberry Pi is quite neatly situated here. I've desoldered these ports and angled them slightly just to give me a bit more case tolerance. Seeing as I figured I'm never going to use this Raspberry Pi anywhere else, I wasn't that bothered about it. I've made a punched a, a slot into the case to let the SD card out. That contains the firmware. And what I've done is I've just soldered straight from the power rails of the board. These are the live active power rails. These are constantly live uh, into this sort of GPIO lines just to power the board continuously. Now I'm actually going to make another mod while I've got the case open because I use this Wi-Fi card that I managed to configure with it. It's um, allegedly uh, an 80211N. That's what it says on the end. And the problem is with it, because it's connected to one of the external USB ports, the external USB ports that are powered by this unit actually turn off when you turn off the monitor. So there's a little bit of a gotcha there, and it's, it's, it's kind of, it's all right, but it's kind of annoying, and I kind of want to use this as a media center, so I want to be able to connect to it even when it's, the screen is turned off. 
Now there's another benefit of this. This screen actually allows, allows you in the menu options to turn the sound bar on and off independently during standby mode. So what you can actually do is you can have the screen off in standby mode but still playing sound. So if the Raspberry Pi is active, you can actually stream music from this to that sound bar underneath with the screen off. So it'll make a nice uh, radio type media center as well. So what I'm gonna do, I don't have a, an extender for USB, not a sensible one, it's too long. So I've got this dongle, I'm gonna split this dongle apart and then use a spare USB wire that I have here. I'm gonna cut this to length and solder it straight onto the pins so that I can route it from the spare USB port here out through the case and just somewhere on the top. So I don't wanna leave it inside the metalwork because it'll be completely shielded. So I'm going to crack that open right now. So we've got the Wi-Fi dongle minus its shell. It's got the four lovely USB pads that would be very easy to solder, so that's great. We're just going to put that aside for now. We have our cable. We have to work out what our wiring solution is going to be. We have the USB here on the actual Raspberry Pi, so that's where it's going to plug in underneath this one. Um, I don't actually fancy punching a hole because as you can see all the PCBs are in and I don't really want to clean up metal swarf out of this or dismantle it any further. I've already soldered all these bits together. So what I'm going to do, rather than run the wire over here over the mains rails, which is obviously unfavourable, um, we're going to just run it through here and actually just pin it around the chassis nicely because it is digital, it's USB wire and maybe glue the USB dongle here in the corner nicely um, and we might be able to see the blue LED so we can keep an eye on that when it's running and I think that's going to work out nicely so all I'm going to do is just actually solder this all in and then I'll show you the routing of that on the other way around I don't really need to show you how to solder because if you're already embarking on a project like this you'll probably already do know how to solder um, and if not, have a look at some of my earlier videos and I'll show you how. So just as a sanity check, in the background here you can see that it's actually got the networks up on the screen. Just to show you now, that's the USB wire all kind of curled up the excess underneath this. It's not particularly pretty but it's very secure and nobody's ever going to see it so who cares. We're never going to have to take it out again. So what I've done is wrapped the wire wrapped it, sorry, traced it around along the top here and I've hot glued the actual dongle to the top of the chassis and I've potted it in hot glue so that will sit proud in the middle. The reason I didn't take it all the way to the end in hindsight was because the high tension drivers for the for the fluorescent tube in the monitor actually goes through here. There's another set on the bottom, so I didn't really want to go near here because I, I don't know if it's noisy or not, but it's, it's a potentially high tension lines and let's keep the Wi-Fi nice and separate. It's all ready now to put back into the enclosure. You might have noticed I've got a different memory card here and that's because this ancient one I was using actually has become corrupted and I knew there was a reason I wasn't using it in the past and now I remember why so while we're at it let's uh, crack that open look you can see the PCB oh it's jumped out the PCB inside the memory card is actually really tiny isn't that funny look at that so that's a PNY memory card but this actually says SanDisk Strange memory cards are so big, aren't they, with the chip so tiny? Oh well. In the bin it goes. So the back cover's all on. All we need to do now is hook up the power line from the unit to the soundbar. There we go. And hook our DVI co connection in. Ensuring, of course, it's the right way round. Don't know if you do these up. Kids in the house, couldn't hurt. There we go. Right, and then we mount this in the unit. Uh, the, sorry, the, we mount this in the display stand and I'll show you what it can do. There's a button here, you can press this and it will allow this portion to slide up. So all I'm gonna do is put some pressure, there we go. And then you can see this is up here. What's also really awesome is that this monitor can actually rotate there we go, through 90 degrees, 
so that if you're playing those arcade classics that require the monitor in a vertical configuration, you can do that. So I'm just going to hang the monitor on. Try to do it one-handed. No, I won't. <laughs> Okay, so the monitor's hooked on the stand now, so if I push down it should lock into place. There we go, it's locked into place. A few fingerprints. I'll just apply power and turn it on and we'll see what happens. So I've just plugged it in. You can see the unit's bursting into life because it has obviously the Raspberry Pi boots up right away. A bit bored while I'm doing that, so I might as well rub off those horrible fingerprints I just put on it. So I'm using Pi Play, which is a build you can get for the Raspberry Pi, which is sort of pre-configured. It does give you a nice interface and you don't really need a keyboard and mouse. In fact, you don't because I always use my Nintendo style gamepad. However, in this case, I have attached a wireless keyboard and mouse. Just in case there's any configuration we need to do, especially on the wireless side. PiPlay does take a while to boot. Um, this is an early Raspberry Pi Model B. Oh, and it says here the disk is full. That's because this is a new card I just put in here. And I'm going to run the Raspi, Raspi config uh, as super user, sudo. Okay. And the reason is I want to do the option expand file system. Because this was an image from an 8 gigabyte card and I've actually now got a 16 gigabyte card. And that should do the trick. Reboot now, yes please. Okay, so here's the Pi Play interface. You can see there's a few ROMs for some various games. So I'm going to just jump straight into Super Nintendo. And we'll go down to... Um, Castlevania. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the volume down a tiny bit because I do know the babies are in bed. Right. And there's your familiar Konami skin. There we go, that's the just standard Super Nintendo Play, just to show you this rotating function. So if you do have that, oh, there we go. So if you do have that vertical arcade game, you can just flip it over and you're ready to go. And I'll show you around the back while I'm here so you can see how stock this unit is. Absolutely stocks. So you just have the cable You just have the cable coming out here with the DVI and the audio from the soundbar going into the unit. That's it. Just these are the actual joystick and keyboard I have currently plugged in. Also, these two USB ports are free for whatever else you need to do. And now that I've got the wireless mounted inside the unit, even when the unit is technically turned off, and I can show you this, why it's important. Even when the unit's turned off, the wireless adapter will continue to function because when you turn off the, the monitor here, monitor off, but pop it back on, look. Your Raspberry Pi didn't go off, it was on the whole time. That's fantastic. And just to show you, this is the power for the soundbar. If you go into the options here, you actually have an option for the audio. Audio on during power saving. So that allows you, normally when you turn it off, you can see the power to the actual soundbar is disabled. But if you have that option turned on, the soundbar will stay on. And because your Raspberry Pi's on, you'll be able to hear your music. So there you have it, an all-in-one stealth gaming system.
because it has a second input as well, remember you can always use it as a standard monitor. So I hope that's inspired you to try building your own gaming system. Please leave any comments you have in the box below or click subscribe if you want to be informed of my next hacking attempt. I am in the future going to build a full scale, one to one scale BMO from Adventure Time with a touch screen and fuller games. So you'll want to see that. Thanks for watching.